Hello YouTube, it's Alan, and um, I wanted to make a video to offer an apology to my viewers on a couple of topics that I've come to view a little bit differently and um, to s I've come to see how things that I've said could potentially have hurt some people's feelings, and that's definitely not what I want to do. Um, so, yeah. So, in within the last few years, as I had uh, started dating after transitioning, I made a couple uh, or so of videos where I basically ranted about um, straight dating, like, about dating straight women, because, you know, before my transition, I just dated queer women. Um, so, okay, so, I apologize if that hurt anybody's feelings. Um, I want to clarify stuff that may not have been very clarified in those videos, which is that um, th that is all about my personal preference and it's about what aspects of a person are or aren't a match for me personally. Um, I don't want to say, like I'm not saying that straight people or straight people with certain attributes are bad, like bad inherently related to their sexual orientation. No, nobody is bad in any way, like just because of their sexual orientation. Okay. Um, what I was talking about in those videos is how um, just, you know, the shock of being in a dating dynamic where traditional gender roles were sometimes really present and expected, and I'm not into that. I think that would most likely be true also if I were a cisgender man with my same values and personality and life experience. Um, I'm just more of a, what would you call it, like, alternative kind of uh, person. Um, so yeah, I was, I just did not feel a match and I, I felt quite alienated going on dates with women who appeared or seemed to really embrace traditional gender roles or really have expectations based on that and um, who seemed to treat me like just according to traditional male gender roles rather than being open to seeing me and treating me just as a person, just as myself, regardless of traditional gender roles. So, you know, for people who, for, for whom that makes them feel good, then go for it. That's not inherently bad. I mean, except for how traditional gender roles can really limit people's possibilities and experiences and are in some way connected to sexism and misogyny and you know, like, getting angry at little boys for crying. Like, those things are harmful, but that's not quite what I'm talking about here. Um, so, okay, all that stuff was about my personal preference and is not about anything inherently bad in anybody. Um, so... So yeah, straight people are fine. I'm fine with being friends with and dating and being in relationships with straight people, straight women. Um, yeah, it, it all just comes down to the person and whether we are 
a match for many more reasons other than gender and sexual orientation. Okay. Um, now, I wanted to mention that I'm not going to take those videos down because really all my videos are part of my authentic experience as a person and as a, a trans person going through transition and encountering different life experiences than what I had before transition. Um, and yeah, basically like I want my videos to, to be authentic, like to, to help in whatever way possible other trans people who are going through transition, like that's the audience that I'm directing all my videos at is trans people. So I had such a hard time figuring things out and understanding myself and coming to terms with being trans and like figuring out all the intricacies of my feelings and experiences. So whatever I can do by having like my authentic experiences and feelings in videos, whatever I can do to help other trans people, that's what I'm going to do. And I don't really feel like there was anything like so like mean or an attack directed at a particular person. Like I don't think that there was something like that that would be unacceptable to the point of taking down my videos and negating the purpose that I just mentioned. In, in the videos that I'm referring to. So, okay, I'm gonna leave them up. Um, and also, you know, I think having, you know, keeping my videos up there, if they're not like horribly mean ad hominem attacks or something, is that it, it does show that people can change and people's understanding can change and deepen, um, not only through transition itself, but also through one's interpretations of and reactions to other people. So I'm a fan of that, you know? Like, um, I hate it when politicians, like when people attack politicians for changing their minds. No, I think that's stupid. Like, as humans, we're supposed to learn and if learning causes us to change our minds, I think that's a good thing. So it's valid to see that process happening in people and for it's valid for, and it's important for everybody to know that that can happen. Okay, so um, moving on, I also wanted to apologize to my viewers for comments that I've made, maybe kind of in passing, maybe not so much in passing, I don't know, that are that were basically like participating in the dominant culture's fat phobia. So this is something that I've learned a lot more about and noticed more, and it's just kind of sunk in more for me as my life experience has progressed and as I've read more things and had more experiences with a variety of people and just observed more. So, okay, this is kind of a complex topic that's new for me to talk about, so it might be kind of, you know, like halting, but I'll try my best. So, what I'm referring to in my videos, the things that I've said that I'm referring to, is that I've made comments, like, in my videos about my transition, where I'm talking about body changes and stuff, and my feelings about my body. I recall making a number of comments about how, pretty much, like I said, I don't want to get fat. Like, I was looking back at... Maybe it was my one year on T video where I was like, oh, I'm so happy with my top surgery and 
I don't want to get fat and like I don't want to get man boobs because I went through that huge ordeal of surgery to get rid of boobs and that's that's true like I don't want to get back a version of what I had this intense surgery to get rid of like I don't but um the comment comments about like gaining weight and being fat or something that is really driven by this cultural fat phobia by which I mean like the fear of being fat that most or a lot of people have and the fear of and hatred of and really negative attitudes towards people who are viewed as fat or overweight. Um, I've come to understand more genuinely how that really is just a cultural thing. It's not, like there's not anything inherently negative or undesirable about being overweight or fat. I'm not sure which terms to use. I mean, different people prefer different terms, just as is the case for LGBT people and those terms about gender and sexual orientation, I suppose. Anyway, uh, there's nothing inherently negative about it, which might be really hard to understand. And like, I didn't begin to understand that until recently. Um, because it is such an entrenched, constant part of this dominant culture. And it's it just all over the place, which makes sense. So it makes sense why it's so hard for us to kind of get outside of it and see it for what it is, because it just seems like the air we breathe. TV, commercials, written media, um, people are always making comments and stuff all over the place about just how it's supposedly not desirable to be overweight and um, people are always trying to like lose weight you know there's such a gigantic industry for dieting um, that's just playing on people's fat phobia yeah it's complicated um okay let me stay focused here um so okay in my videos i think i was making these uh, like small comments but they could have had an impact on people in the sense of making basically feeling offensive and insulting and dismissive and stuff like that and that's not how I want to be so if you felt that way I am very sorry and um, I was not what I wasn't really thinking about those possible effects of my comments at the time but I have thought more about it since um, so I've learned a lot more about how people who are viewed as fat face a lot of discrimination and negativity and um, just a lot of hardship, both from without and within because of the, our pervasive fat phobia. And um, so a book that I'm in the process of reading that I do really recommend, it's an awesome book, is Shrill by Lindy West. And it's a memoir, yeah, a memoir of her experience being um, fat for most of her life. And the really intense difficulties and really hateful, mean 
things that she's experienced from other people because of it. Um, now, she's also a comedian, so there are a lot of parts that are hilarious, but there are also serious parts that have really gotten me in touch with what's going on with this phenomenon of fat phobia and how it is culturally created and really harmful. Um, so I really recommend this, especially if you're not that familiar with stuff I'm talking about, or if you are and you want some validation or something, or just a good book. Uh, now I do want to mention that there are some parts that are hard to read, especially for people who have experienced violence and misogyny and might have trauma around that because she does talk quite a bit about her experience with trying to bring people's attention to how it's actually really harmful that how a lot of male comedians make jokes in quotation marks about really violent misogynist things. And when she spoke up about that, she got really intense backlash with, with like thousands of people on the internet saying really like violent, hateful things to her. So if you're sensitive to that, maybe don't read it or skip those chapters. But I've learned a lot from that book. Also, just by chance, I happen to have read this article in the New York Times just last week. Um, this is from February 9th, 2020. It's from the New York Times Modern Love column, The Unhealthy Math of Skinny Plus Pretty Equals Good by Lauren Covalucci. So I invite you to Google that. It's about kind of the, the same topic, of course, like feeling tortured and pressured for most of her life regarding weight and her own processing of issues around that. So that was pretty powerful. So I recommend stuff like that. And um, so I really encourage people to seek out the voices of people who have experienced fat phobia firsthand, not just as like a usually thin person who experiences some effects of fat phobia in terms of the pressure to stay thin, but I'm talking about people who have really experienced the discrimination and stuff because that is way more educational and powerful than anything that I would be able to say. Um, and related to that, if you want to, like if you have an impulse to make a comment on this video where you're like, well, such and such view about fat people is actually valid because like, you know, if you're like arguing with me, um, please pause and don't pause the video pause your pause what you're doing before commenting and educate yourself a bit because the comeback that you have might not be as true as you think it is and you might not be aware of the effects on other people and i think we should take care of each other in life, you know? Like, it really matters to treat people with care and to be aware of the effects of one's words and actions. I'm not saying that you have to, like, always act only out of concern for other people and not concern for yourself or for truth. Like, no. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, it's important to be considerate and to educate yourself about the full picture before you spout off about it. 
I think we all don't quite do that as much as we should at times, but I really encourage you to do that. Um, okay, well, so again, I am really sorry for those comments about fatness, and I just, I, I didn't quite explain as much as I wanted to, like, about how there isn't anything inherently bad about people who are viewed as or who identify as fat. Um, it doesn't have any inherent bearing on attractiveness or desirability or lovability or... Um, yeah. All of our opinions about that are cultural, even if it is really hard for us to see that it is cultural. Um, okay, well, this is pretty long, so I should definitely stop talking. Um, I would be happy to see any, you know, constructive, considerate comments that you may have. Um, or if you want to tell me about your feelings, go ahead. I'm open to learning. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope that all you viewers are doing well. And see you later. Bye.